Christmas. Hello, Merry Christmas indeed. So we've got a new gift for our lab and we're all going to be using it, me, Helena and John. What do you think it is? I think it's a new 3D printer. I know it's going to be red. Oh, he knows too much already. Okay, right. This is going to be an unboxing, setting up and 3D printing video. Uh, we've had the old printer since, what, 2014? And it was a kit build and it was a bit cheap. Well, more expensive than this. Let's see how things have changed in 2018. Start getting the knife in. Oh, careful, John. So, we're all feeling a little bit stuffed. Less stuffed than the turkey is, I suppose. Well, the turkey's more less stuffed now we've eaten it. While I'm cutting here, I think Jonathan's going to entertain you a little bit. What happens if you put a vampire with a snowball? I don't know, Jonathan. What does you happen? You get forced by. Oh. Okay. What if you got a spider Christmas with a duck? Duck! <laughs> Excuse me, you do need to duck. I don't know what does happen if you cross Father Christmas and the duck. You get Christmas crackers. Oh, Christmas crackers. And this is about 15 kilos, so... Yeah. Right, John, I need you to hold the box down while I pull the thing out. The problem is, is I think I'm putting slightly more, it's slightly heavier than John. Now, let's Doctor, move the box Doctor, out of the way. I feel like a curtain. They're oh, closed. You're still, they're all these together. Move Ooh. the box out of the way, then, dude. Can I use this for crafting pads? Oh, probably. Right. Yay. We've got way more packaging to get through before we're in. So, John is busy planning his crafting packages. Packages? What are you? The way he's going to craft the packaging, that's what I meant. Okay, so this is nicely set up with lots and lots of packing foam, which is good. Um, because I must admit, when it was delivered, I was ever so slightly worried the delivery driver was perhaps a little flippant with the device of, oh, my new printer. This printer, as John inferred, is bright red. This is the Flashforge Finder. So it's among the cheaper of printers for a small printer. There's something special about this one. You can already tell from the packaging that what we've got here is a printer that's had some industrial design. This printer is not like my other printer, some shoddy thing that I threw together from a kit sometime and barely worked. No, this is the real deal. This is a printer that you could see working in your home. And uh, my advice on 3D printers, if you are buying one for the first time, is get something like this or get one of the other fully constructed ones. There are cheaper ones. It's about £300. There are ones around £150. If you get a 3D printer kit, you may have given yourself a 3D printer project. If you get a 3D printer like this, I think you've got yourself a tool. This is one of the first ones I've seen that came with in Quick Start Guide. Oh, yeah. What I correct about them, um, it's um, making Wartek 3D prints red. We've not seen the filament yet, so it might not be. With a support contact. So I get a support contact card, and that looks like that sticks to the device. It does tell you how to get it out of the box. <laughs> Bit late for that now, but there we go. The foam sheet should contain the quick start guide. Right, after sale service card. Got a USB stick, bunch of Allen keys, some grease. Uh, a wrench, a pretty awful cheap screwdriver, but I've got some better ones, and a long pokey thing. What's a long pokey thing? An unclogging pin tool. Some PTFE tube, power cable, and I presume now I can take the top bit of foam out. There is a ribbon here going to the print head and the extruder. Now it's already better than the old printer because the old printer just had uh, some, I kid you not, DuPont cables going here, and they would pull out and there would be problems, especially around the sensors. So they've made it kind of using this flex ribbon 
It behaves almost like it's already got a drag chain built in. Nice. Uh, discard the blue tape. Use scissors to cut the four buckles. It's not a regular box now. I guess it's got to be me that's thinking outside the box, right, John? Secret peak holes. Secret peak holes. Oh, I see. So you're... You're spying from inside the box there. Yeah, I am. Well, I've got a 3D printer, he's got a cardboard box. I'd say we're sorted for Christmas Let's now. Let's buy one! If anyone viewing has ever played Metal Gear Solid, they'll know how useful a spy box might be. Now, John, you wanted to know what colour filament we have. The good news is we've got a whole bunch of new filament. Wow. Bad news is it's white. I'm bored of the white. Black and white's white too. Well, we can always spool new coloured filament on there. We've got to lift up the build plate. And while I'm lifting oh. this up, the lead screw yeah. here is turning with it. That so is so wrong. Now we get to slide this out. The power supply brick. The um, disappearing purple glue. That can be used on the build plate because sometimes it can help with better adhesion. And also adhesion. on my box. Oh, filament guide tube. So we've got a surface here that's kind of like a build tag. Why do you think that surface is less smooth? I don't know. Maybe it's a little too cold. It's not quite that smooth because there's a little dot in it. This one is designed to have the little dots. Yeah. And they're little dots so it sticks better. Um, I think we're supposed to get that out. I don't think you are, no. Up here we can take out a clip. And that's for the filament. Uh, One of the problems we had with the old printer, the spool actually got tangled up because it wasn't being held properly. Filament reel was being pulled in, sucked in, stopped the y-axis, which ruined a print. Thread the filament through this device here. And this device has a special feature that my old printer didn't. When the filament is out here, it will stop the printer, John. So we won't carry on trying to print when it's run out of filament. Dad, Jonathan had Dad, a question. Dad, why can't you build a 3D printer out of Lego? Actually, I believe that has been done. Um, maybe I can instead of the filament, instead you're good, that's just going to be all Lego pieces. Instead of a 3D printer, it's like a 3D printer, but instead it's a 3D Lego printer. A 3D, so you basically want an automatic Lego so maker. Instead of needing filament, you just need to dump in a whole lot of weather, all different types of colours. And then and then you can design it and it will and then you can then you can make an app that um for the Lego and you'll build it. A Lego printer that three D prints in Lego. So what you'd take is So basically even a three D even the printer is made out of Lego. Okay, what we even would... take out one single piece, nothing will happen. Oh. You know, it still will happen. And you can put it back. It'll look quite quicker. And the base, you could take, or you could take off all of it and then pop it back. That'd be so cool just being able to um, make your own Lego 3D printer. And even the wires were made out of Lego. Even the wires made out of Lego. Cool. I think I'd want a Lego, a fully Lego, fully operational 3D printer that could print in Lego, with Lego, made with Lego. Sounds like fun. This is what I built and it's made out of Lego and it's basically a weapon. I call it an ultrasonic gun. Ultrasonic gun, not a screwdriver then. Well, if someone does know it, basically these will just spin around and hit them. Okay, so it's like kind of like a, a robot wars weapon on a stick. Yeah, and if they do, and if I want to, I could switch to the other side, and then I'll turn up to this, and then it will be like a back scratcher. Oh, so it's a back scratcher, or or it's a a, a spinner weapon of doom. Yeah. I guess you could finish being in a battle with spinning weapons of doom and go, oh, my back. Is that what you could do? Yeah. Cool. It's now in its new home on my desk, ready to go. Let's power it up. 
We have a lot going on up here. Ah, I see. Ooh, we have activity. Some life. There's a touch screen menu on that. And there's a little temperature indicator up here. That power button, is that a soft power or a hard, a hard power? Soft power. Well, I guess the next thing I need to do is go and do the levelling. That's very cute. I wonder if it's got a beeper or if it's just using one of the steppers. Alright, so we go... Tools. Level. Screw the three nuts anti-clockwise until you can't tighten them anymore. Okay. Now, just like my other machine, this is a three-point bed. Press OK. Be sure you can't tighten these nuts anymore. Ooh, okay, now there's a little bit in there. Yes. Verifying the distance between the nozzle and the build plate, you can see it's actually got a little tiny probe switch right there. And it's just tapping that to the bed, so it's actually a physical probe. Distance too big. Unscrew corresponding nut near the platform cl clockwise until hearing a steady beep. Verify. Now you can see that's completely ski whiff. But moving in slowly and back. Test o tap OK to go to the next level point. Okay. This wall so because it's a nice rigid serious construction, it's not gonna have some of the warping problems that the uh, 3D printed and laser cut uh, Omeron did have. Verify. The other thing is, the other one I needed a screwdriver and a spanner and everything else, you know, to get to it. This one's got nice, grippable thumb nuts, so I can just do it with my hand. I don't need to go and get out everything and try and get to an awkward position. Verifying the distance. Oh, wait a minute, it's still going. Right, distance too big. Completed! Right, that was actually the easiest bed levelling I've ever done. If that works as well as that just looked, that's already fantastic. Okay. Tools. Filament. Load. I'm heating up. And I can hear a fan going on as well. That's so nice. There's a cancel button if I want it. So just so you can put it in context, I'm putting it actually next to the laptop. Uh, instead of behind me where the other one is so I kind of made it a bit more reachable towards to do things I think having the other printer behind me probably made it even more frustrating to work with than it already was right filament is loaded gosh that's immediately solidified because there's much better fans for cooling that off so that's great that's also some advantage over the old printer so over on the right hand side here there is a USB port so I presume on the USB stick they have a test print Build. kind of tricky to tell but that first layer appears to be going down nicely I didn't bother with uh, any glue stick or anything I'm just going straight on that uh, platform I noticed where I pushed it through it's kind of extruded a little wisp over here that may be because I pushed more through than it was bargaining for but that's okay and they've gone for a strategy with it's almost like a skirt but there's part of the skirt missing how odd okay, well let's assume they know what they're doing I mean, looking inside at the construction, we've got dual bearings, it's nearly silent. My other printer was so much louder, I mean, obviously it's fan noise, but this is 
so much quieter. Oh, and I can even program it to finish the print and shut itself down. Beautiful! Well, I'm thoroughly impressed. Uh, I actually, and it's a bit of a chance on a printer that's as new as this, uh, I left it somewhat unattended for some of that time. Uh, it's come out with a print that to me looks like one of the best I've seen in a long time. And uh, I mean, look at the quality of this. Now I think this is a detachable bed. Here you get the build plate straight out. Oh, look at that. That's brilliant. And you look at this, this is a test print. There's little stringing. I'm probably going to find it's got an incredibly large infill. It's quite solid. I do have to figure out how to get it off this build surface, but uh, I'm thoroughly impressed. So I have a plan, a master plan for this printer. Um, and the next thing I'm going to be printing, and I'm going to give you a hint, and there's a much bigger video coming on this, is this thing. Uh, I'm, uh, this is actually part of a tank chassis, which I am, if I can get it to do everything I want to do, will be the basis of my next Pi Wars, that's Pi Wars 2019 robot. Uh, and I'm making a, a gearbox that will plug into here and a motor, so it'll uh, be able to make a chassis that's narrower. So I'm going to be 3, 3D printing a bracket to do that. There's also a project that Helena is working on, which she'd been printing on my other printer. Uh, and these are shuttle parts, so she's looking to do a, a space shuttle 3D model. If you've enjoyed this video, you can find out much more about building your own robots. And I realise there's much more about the 3D printer than building a robot, but and you don't need a 3D printer for a robot. But learn robotics programming the book that I have just released in November uh, does show you how to build a robot, does show you how to get started on programming enough, on designing it, on planning it. Um, you don't need a 3D printer. Uh, you need to maybe write a few lines of code, but you don't need to be an expert programmer. So that is Learn Robotics Programming. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, I hope you have uh, an enjoyable meal. I hope you also get some things you love as much as I think I love this new printer. And uh, I shall see you next time. Go make stuff and be awesome. Bye!